We'll do the, uh, the glute squeezes first. So we'll make your feet about shoulder width, a little bit turned out with your feet, so they're not straight, they're a little bit, about 10 degrees turned out. And I have a little bit of a twist in the, in the feet like we've done before, as if the little toe's wrapping around the heel. And it's about two to 5%, 10% max of your, your power to do that. So it's just, it's there. And then from here, you squeeze your butt as hard as you can. So you're aiming to, I think you're like you're cracking your walnut between your butt cheeks is the easiest way to say it. And you really put your awareness into your backside. Can you make that really tight or can you not feel it? If you can't feel it, we need to go back into uh, more basic exercises to get the neural drive to better fire your buttocks. Otherwise this exercise will overload your ITB band, the, the uh, TFL muscle and also uh, help put too much pressure into your knee and not distribute force through into your foot, which is extremely important. Then we let it relax. Then from here, just whack your butt. I'm using my that part of my thumb here. Whack your butt. Give a bit of a slap. So we're doing all this priming to put the sensory awareness into the buttock so the brain can find it much better. So we do that again. So the feet a little bit turned out, screwing the feet a little bit. Squeeze your butt as hard as you can. And I'm putting my mind, my awareness into my butt. So I need to find in my brain, where, where is the muscles of my buttocks? So we find that, that's really important. So we get this primed, so it helps us to lessen quad dominance, hip flexor dominance, to eventually get rid of it, so you don't have to think about it anymore. So we're getting the, uh, the glutes and your hemis involved, and I'll relax again. Give it another whack, another slap. Any muscle you can't fire very well, you do some of this kind of action. So even when I've stopped hitting, I still feel where my hand just slapped. So the brain gets information, then it helps it find the muscle in a motor pathway, which is the power and usage of that muscle. So I screw the feet again, and I squeeze my butt as hard as I can. So bring your feet together, your hands on your knees, and you're just bending the knees back and forth. We're not locking the knees out. And we're keeping the heels on the ground the whole time. So we're stretching out the ankle joints, getting the knees ready, getting the body prepared for some weight to go through the legs. As I'm doing this, as I start to straighten my knees, I'm pushing through my big toes. So I push my big toes into the ground like this, just a little bit. Then I let it off and I push them in let it off so a little bit of activation through that big toe flexor halicus longus is the big toe muscle it's a big muscle to uh an important muscle to control rotation in the feet so the pronation supination of the foot so as i get more warmed up here this is probably the first thing you do in the day that's warming up your body which is a very good thing to do get the joints ready for the day release a lot of um, stagnation from the energy system getting more information about your body or from your body going to your brain, to your awareness. And we're letting any stiffness that come from sleeping last night, we're letting that disappear pretty quick. So the rest of the day is a lot easier. Otherwise it takes a few hours for that stiffness to leave. So as I get a bit more warmed up here, I'm going a bit deeper. The main thing is that your heels still stay on the ground. And as you get more warmed up, and over the course of weeks, months and years, you find you can come down quite a bit. But the main thing is that you're keeping heels on the ground. When you have the heels on the ground, it makes the force go through the back of the legs more, and not so much in the knees. As soon as you go into the ball of the foot, doing this, a lot of pressure goes into the front of the knees, which is a good thing to, which is a good thing to train sometimes. But for a lot of people, when the body is conditioned, it's not the right thing to do at the start. So we want it to go through the back of the knees. About 20 knee bends is good. So there's probably about 20 there. Then we start to circle. Just small circles to begin with. We're keeping the feet on the ground, flat on the ground. So I don't want to make the, to make the circle so big that my, my feet peel off the ground like this. It's not, not that. That's too much movement. It's too much um, abnormal force going through the knees and the ankles and the feet joints. And I'm feeling, I'm feeling into my body, how's my body feel today? Does it feel a bit stiffer than usual? No energy today? Or do we feel really vital today? 
And if you let your lower back be straight like this, which is fine to do, you'll find that the pressure goes, uh, that the circle stays in the knees. But if I let my lower back round out a little bit, I can actually make these circles affect into my lower back too. So I can loosen my back doing this too. So let's get out of the way. About 10, 10 each way is good. The legs have a rotational component to them. Whenever we walk, run, do Kung Fu, there's rotation going through the joints. There's a small amount of rotation that goes in the knee. Usually when people think about the knee, it's just the joint that does this, the hinge joint they call it. But it actually does a bit of this as well. That movement there is coming mainly from my knee.